hear me? Okay, so my name's John. Uh, I work at the Earth Institute at Columbia University and I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the work that we're doing with solar microgrids uh, to electrify villages in Africa and India and how these can help extremely poor people help themselves get out of poverty. Um, just some, some basic numbers, there's over 600 million people in Africa that don't have access to basic energy services like electricity. Same as in India, there's over 600 million people in India that don't have any access to electricity. That's a lot of people and so their, their only energy source is, is biomass. They're burning wood and or cow dung, cow shit to eat and a lot of their time is spent securing, uh, you know, gathering this, this biomass to cook their fuel. So they don't have the free time in the day to work on improving their economy, getting better jobs, things like that. Um, you know, they're, they're just gathering this energy. And Black Rock City itself is powered by, I would say, literally hundreds of, of little microgrids whether it's, you know, you've got a generator and you let your friend plug their charger in, or, you know, this, this camp is sharing a much larger generator that's got dozens of people connected to it. And so, is, it, is there any slides on here, I wonder? Well, they're all right. So, so what we've developed and what we're developing is a, a solar powered microgrid where individual consumers within a community that doesn't have access to the electrical grid, they can buy energy from this local utility. So the, the initial upfront cost may be paid for by a sponsor, by the government. You know, it is, one of the responsibilities of a government is to deliver these energy services to the local community. You, you expect to have access to electricity. All of us are used to plugging stuff in, turn the switch, the light comes on. But these basic energy services that once they're there can enable so many other incredible things to happen. Like, you know, if you've got electricity, you can charge a cell phone, you can get more jobs, you can get more work, you can get more money, you can buy a radio. Now you need to buy more electricity you are able to hear about other opportunities that you wouldn't have heard of without these energy services. You can keep your food fresh longer. You can save money by buying more food at a time and it doesn't, it doesn't spoil. Other services will be available to you if there's energy. The vaccines that need to get distributed to allow you to live a longer life. Without energy to keep those vaccines cold, they break down, they, they, they disintegrate. So once you know, once these energy services are available, you're able to help yourself make more money, improve your economy, and help your community. So the difference between a, a donation of electrical system and an enterprise model is that with an enterprise and with the, the shared solar, which is one of the concepts that, we, that we're, we've been rolling out, it's a prepaid system. So you go and you buy, say, 10 kilowatt hours of energy. Your circuit turns on, you plug stuff in, it works. Once you've used up your, you know, what you've paid for, it shuts off. You go and buy more. And the difference with the prepaid system is that it reduces your risk. You, you manage, as a consumer, you manage your budget. You have money, you buy power. You don't have money, you don't buy power. You don't end up with this big bill from the utility that you can't pay for. And the utility doesn't have to manage all of these credit risk assessments for all their customers of, you know, is this, person going to pay for this energy that they've already used or am I going to have to go, you know, take one of their cows or something. You know, it's just, it eliminates all of that risk and it makes the whole system work really smoothly. And so we have this set up in uh, at least a dozen locations in Africa and it, it, what we've seen and, you know, there are metrics there is that once you have these basic services, you are able to, to build other 
entrepreneurial enterprise based models that the local community can then use to have so this has legs so for example there's a woman owned cooperative in um, one of the countries that I'm blanking on right now but they're selling cold drinks and they're making money and they're buying more power and they're selling more drinks and they're making money and they're buying more power and so the grid operator is able to increase the size of their capacity of their system so the whole you know there's there's an O&M incentive right there for somebody to keep the system working and and the whole thing can build and they can build it themselves and so it's a big difference from from say a a donated generator or a donated solar panel or, or a bunch of donated solar panels in that if nobody is really incentivized to to keep it going locally it's very easy to fall apart and it doesn't really become part of the community and it doesn't really have traction and so you know what I would say is that there's a there's a lot of work going on in, in trying to solve like challenges in Africa challenges in in Haiti India all these places that have little to no access to to these basic energy services and there is kind of this shift in the approach of you know don't just it's it's kind of the old you know give somebody fish they'll eat for a day give them a, a, a fishing rod they can keep catching fish and so the entrepreneurial enterprise based model of developing these microgrids in areas where it, it literally is cheaper to develop a solar microgrid than to develop a, a traditional grid it's not you know, solar is great because it has all these environmental environmental benefits. Those are there, but those don't matter. I mean, it, it's just it's cheaper to get the services out to them that way, and and it's just it's a better approach. And so, I'm probably skipping a few of my points without the slides. But what I what I would like to also share is what I found to be a, a key to to finding happiness, and it's. It's aided by the fact that I've, I've gotten to spend a lot of time in very poor communities. And the, the poorer cultures, the poorer communities aren't necessarily less happy. And in fact, it's the inverse. The, the more money people have, the less happy they tend to be. But, but a way that you really can find happiness is by helping other people. And it, it costs very little. You get a lot of value out of it. And it helps everyone around you. So, so that's my parting thought in that if you really want to be happy and you really want to, you know, find a way that, you know, money's not, not doing it for you, just find a way to help the people around you and that, that will give you quite, quite a good amount of leverage to, to make yourself feel better. So, thanks.